actually, before we begin this, I realized we started a new chapter and didn't look at the, uh, yeah, the warrior record. Okay, so we're budding and corruption is low. That's good. Good signs. Okay, sometime after that incident, we began to move to Nag Nagaoka in Nagareyama, a mansion east of Edo. Kondo had become reluctant to go into battle, but after several talks with Hijikata, he was eventually convinced otherwise. Until we'd finished our preparations for our journey to Aizu, we would be training in Nagareyama. Saito was visiting some place named Ichikawa, where he would be training to use new modern armaments. The location of Shimoza's provincially run government, shogunate forces used this as a base of operations before fleeing to Aizu. Okay. Sanon and Heisuke had left with the Fury Corps along the Utsunomiya route to Aizu, since they couldn't go to the Kanako Mansion. A domain located in between Niko Kaido and Oshu Kaido. Kaido. After the Battle of Tobafushimi, it defected to the Imperial Army. Great. Man, everyone's just split up everywhere. We're gonna be going so many different places going forward. Wow! This... This works wonderfully for you. I don't know if it, like... Like, your hair pops. Which doesn't make sense, because you would think the white outfit would have made it pop more, but this really works for you. Miss Yukimura, do you know where Chief is? Oh, Kondo is in his room reading a book. Is something the matter? Oh, nothing in particular, but... Namara had a peculiar look on his face, as if there was something on his mind. I can't shake this worrying feeling. Like, the chief lost the will to fight against this new government. Well, I don't think that's the case. I wouldn't say that he's completely lost his will to fight. Namara seemed hesitant to respond as he stayed silent for a moment, but eventually... You're probably right, huh? I mean, Commander Hijikata is still giving his all for the chief. I'm sure Chief will return to his old self soon enough. Sorry for asking. With that, Namora quickly scurried off, entering the side of the building. Hmm. He raised a good point, though. Ever since we had arrived here, Kondo seemed like a different person. The ambitious fire in his eyes grew a little dimmer. He would either lock himself up in his room, or he'd spend time reading or contemplating in the garden. But I held on to the sliver of hope that his confidence was only a little deflated from the defeat in Kofu. I... I knew that surely his confidence would soon be restored and he'll return to his usual self. Right? Kondo, I brought you some tea. Oh, thank you. He paused in the act of flipping a page to smile up at me. What are you reading? Hmm? Oh, I'm reading the Romance of the Three Kingdoms and the biography of Kiyomasa. War Chronicles, basically. The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Do you remember when you used to tell Soji that story? A biography of Kiyomasa Kato, a military commander during the Warring States period. And War Chronicles? There we go. A story that details the exploits of warriors and daimyo who had served in the Warring States period, organized and woven as a comprehensive narrative. I practically know them by heart by now, but each time I read them I discover a new fascinating fact. When I was young, I wanted to be just like Kansei Teikun, a most legendary warrior. I wanted to fight for someone other than myself. A general who had served under Louis Lu Bei, I think it's Lu Bei, a Chinese warlord who lived during the late Han Dynasty. This name was bestowed upon him as a gesture of deification. Wow. He grinned like a young boy, but after a moment the grin faded. But I guess dreaming about being a great commander doesn't make you one. I wish I'd realized that a little earlier. He shut the book softly and set it down on top of his desk. What are you talking about? You've only just begun. But he didn't even seem to hear me. 
How's Toshi? I think he's up in his room writing something. Pop probably orders for Saito. He's off in I Good grief. He's off in Ichikawa right now, you know. Oh. I keep giving Toshi so much to do. I don't think he's pushing himself too hard. And nothing makes him happier than being able to help you. That's just the kind of guy he is. You've really turned out to be quite a page to him, haven't you? I think you know him quite well by now. An assistant to a samurai or noble, traditionally a young man. Ahem. <clears throat> you think so? He seemed quite serious about it, and I felt my cheeks getting warm. That's right. Back when I first got here, I was supposed to be his... page or something. Oh, yes. I never thought you'd be here for so long, to be honest. Before I knew it, we were reminiscing about the time we'd spent in Kyoto. Oh, no. Kondo's gonna go soon, isn't he? <laughs> we're having this touching moment. Back then, we never could have guessed that the Satsuma Choshu Alliance would take control of the Imperial Court or reinstate the Emperor. There were many challenges we faced, but I thought we'd continue our lives as they were in Kyoto. But... I know things will work out. Hijikata will get us through this. He responded with a melancholy laugh. <laughs> Don't you think you're asking quite a bit of him, Yukimura? What do you mean? Oh, wow. Shimada. Even Shimada gets a new outfit? Dang. Before he could answer, the door slid open with a snap, and Hijikata and Shimada ran in, their faces tense and drawn. Hijikata? What's happened? We gotta go now. The mansion's surrounded. What? There's two, maybe three hundred of them out there. We came in through the back so they wouldn't spot us. If there were only twenty or thirty of them, then maybe we could take them. Hejikata worked his lip and glanced out the window, frustrated and tense. Don't even have time to call back Saito and his men. Guess we'll have to come up with something here. Shimada, Chizuru, you two take Kondo and go on ahead. What? Hijikata, not even you can take on that many people! And it's... it's daytime out there. I won't know till I try! Hijikata, the soldiers out there are all riflemen. Both Shimada and I moved toward the door in an effort to physically stop Hijikata if it came to that. I'm proud of you both. Kondo was in quiet contemplation since Hijikata and Shimada had entered, but now he finally spoke. This is it. Wait. Toshi, you don't have to do that. I'll go have them take me to their headquarters. What the hell? You might as well just paint a target on your chest! I wouldn't introduce myself as Kondo of the Shinsengumi, of course. I'll just tell them we're Hatamoto, and that we're here to secure this location. At any rate, it should buy enough time for you guys to get away. Uh. Shimada and I were both shocked into silence, but not Hijikata. Listen to yourself! You really think they'll let you just waltz in and fuck with them like that? You saw how they work back in Kyoto! There's no way in hell those bastards don't hate our guts! They won't believe that crap about us being Hatamoto for a second! Well, even if I do get captured, I have the status of a daimyo. They can't just kill me. You've gotta be kidding me. You think they'll give a shit about a title you got from the old Shogun? You go out there, you're signing your death warrant. You really think I'll just let you do that? No matter what Hijikata said, Kondo's expression didn't change. He only gazed back at him, his expression cool and placid. I've made my decision. Nothing you say can convince me otherwise. Hijikata began to shake. In all the time I'd been with the Shinsengumi, I'd never seen Hijikata and Kondo act like this before. Usually it was Hijikata who kept a cool head and Kondo who succumbed to his emotions. But this time... No! No! What the hell is the Shinsengumi going to do without its chief? You're coming with me even if I have to knock you out and drag you! You have a responsibility to the Shinsengumi! You don't get to die and run away from that! 
Hijikata was screaming at Kondo, his white knuckled fist gripping the front of the other man's kimono and his eyes red with held back tears. But his fury and pleas broke across Kondo's impassable calm like wind against a mountain. This is a direct order. You will go to Ichikawa to meet with the rest of our men. And Yukimura and Shimada will go with you. Oh. Hijikata stumbled back a step, shocked by the force of Kondo's voice. You're going to tell me what to do. What the hell is this? His eyes were still dry, but his voice trembled. Aren't your chief's orders absolute? You've ordered men to kill themselves, or to become furies from disobeying that rule. Are you somehow an exception? Is that the sort of warrior you want to be? The act of disemboweling oneself, which carried weight in society as a ritualistic form of suicide, thereby preserving the honor of one's name while simultaneously acknowledging the depth of one's sins. Hijikata said nothing. As long as he'd been commander, Hijikata strove to lead by example. He lived by the code, and demanded others do likewise to groom the Shinsengumi into true samurai. No doubt Kondo had counted on that fact. He meant to use it to keep Hijikata alive. Shimada, Yukimura, I want you to leave with Toshi. If you take too long, they'll attack, and my surrender will have meant nothing. He gave Shimada and me a little shove to get us moving, and Shimada turned to look at Hijikata. For a moment, he said nothing. Commander, let's go. Hijikata didn't move. He only stood, chewing at his lip until Kondo laid his hands on his friend's shoulders and gave him a warm smile. Hey, Toshi. Let it go. Let me go. You run yourself ragged trying to earn me the status and fame that I wanted. You even turned yourself into a fury. It kills me to see you do all these things for me. I'm not worth it. Hijikata didn't look up. He blinked rapidly, trying to hold back tears and stare desperately at the floor. Then he swallowed, and when he spoke, his voice was tight and strained. I... If I do this, then what have I been fighting for all these years? I became a warrior, served our country. I won numerous battles and killed men. All because I thought you'd be there at the end of it all with us. From Hijikata's mouth came an outpouring of dejection, not unlike how Kondo was after the defeat at Kofu Castle. I'm sorry. I brought you here. I did this to you. Thinking back on it, it was all sort of a dream. We weren't real samurai, but we strapped on our swords and went to work for the Imperial Court. His voice was warm, but it seemed that very kindness made it even harder for Hijikata. Hijikata took a deep breath and squeezed his eyes shut, willing the tears to go away. The room was silent before he finally spoke. Shimada. Send a message to our remaining men. We need to secure an escape route. Yes, sir! Chizuru, stay here. Once we're ready, I'll come get you. All right. With that, Hijikata and Shimada left, and Kondo and I were alone. He reached into his kimono and pulled something out. Yukimura, take this with you. He handed me a small cloth bag. It clinked as he laid it in my hand. What is it? Money. To help you escape. I wasn't able to do anything for you. This is a token of my appreciation for all you've done for us. Please, take it. How could he be so kind when his situation was so grim? His warmth still lingered on the bag as I took it. I felt a lump rise in my throat. You still have time. I'll tell Toshi. Once you get away, go somewhere safe and look for Dr. Matsumoto. I don't think they do anything too bad to a girl like you. Just forget you ever had anything to do with us. Marry a man you love and live a peaceful life. Find happiness. 
what should I say? I mean, we know Kondo will not escape. Um, squeak! That was my chair. And I'm not running away, because the guy I want to marry is here. Um, your friend. I wonder if we... Is there any way we can intimate to Kondo that we're actually interested in Doji? I think he'd be happy <laughs> to know that's the case. Uh, well, let's see. I appreciated Kondo's kind gesture, but I shook my head. No, I won't run. I want to go with Hijikata. I'm... I'm his page. I bit my lip, afraid that if I said any more, I might cry. Instead, I looked up at Kondo and did my best to smile. His eyes were warm as he looked down at me. I see. Toshi's been blessed with some great friends, hasn't he? I'll be counting on you, then. Take care of him for me. I tried to respond, but the lump in my throat made any sort of speech impossible. Ugh. Man, that was so sad. I'm like, I had a lump in my throat the entire time. Ugh. That was so sad. Eventually, Hechikata and Shimada returned. He gathered all of the remaining warriors, including Soma and Nomura. What? We're going to leave Chief behind? Is that true, Commander? Chief's orders. You're all going to escape this place and I'll be right behind you. If he just surrenders, then his cover will be blown immediately. At least here I could remain by Chief's su- I said Chief's orders! Or do you have shit in your ears? Don't you dare put Kondo's efforts in vain with your stupid suggestions! <sighs> Soma looked like he wanted to respond, but instead he looked down as he tightened his fists and shook. Just then... I'm going to stay. I understand they're the Chief's orders. However, as a warrior of the Shinsengumi, I can't abandon the Chief. Namora. Namora, you bastard. You really want this sword in your gut right now? No, it's not like that. Hold on! Namora didn't even blink. His eyes burned with intense vigor as he glared back at Hijikata. I understand that you, more than anyone else, want to remain here, Commander. But the Chief entrusted the Shinsengumi to you, which is why you can't. So that's why I want to protect the Chief in your stead, Commander. Hijikata curled his lip, staring down at Namora for a long moment silently. Eventually... Oh gosh. He unsheathed the e... Gosh, the Izumi... Izumi no Kami Kanesada from the scabbard on his left hip. Commander! As the exclamation left Shimada's mouth, Hijikata pointed the tip of his sword toward Namora's throat. You said you'll protect the chief, right? Sweat trickled down Namora's flushed cheeks. He met Hijikata's stare, fixing his gaze steadily before he nodded in a curt manner. Yes, I will. Then you'd better keep your goddamn word. No matter what you do, don't separate yourself from Kondo, clear? Namara's eyes grew wide. They trembled ever so slightly, but soon after they brimmed with a fiery determination. Yes, sir! I, Risaburu Namora, promise to protect Chief's life no matter the cost. Man, Namora, you're one of the good ones. It seemed Namora convinced Hijikata as the latter returned his blade to its sheath. Let's go. Hijikata's words were curt as he nodded briskly before leaving the residence behind. Man, Soma lost his friend that day too. So, in a short while, Kondo and Namora will hand the terms of surrender to the Imperial Army. I looked back over my shoulder many times as we ran. Soon, Kondo would surrender to his enemies. Perhaps, I thought to myself time and again, if we turn back now, we can still rescue him. There have to be ways all four of us can escape. Shimada seemed to feel the same way, but Hijikata never once turned to look back. If he did, he would just turn back. 
We ran and ran through the forest to Ichikawa. It didn't matter how quickly we got there, it wouldn't be soon enough to bring back an army to save Kondo. We all knew that, but Hijikata didn't slow down. Are you alright, Yukimura? I can carry you if you're getting tired. I'm fine. I can keep going. Aw, oh, thank you, Shimada. Hijikata, his back to us, said nothing, but I could feel how pained he was with each step he took from Kondo. Is Soma with us, or what? Is or did Soma stay behind? I'm not entirely clear on that. The sun had begun to dip toward the western horizon, and night had started to fall when... Oh. Hey! You there! Stop! Where are you headed? He was dressed in a simple western uniform. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, he was just, uh... What's the- he was a fuse ready to be ignited, basically. He's just like... Hejikata only frowned and made to walk past the soldier. Hey, he said stop! God damn it, are you another one of these shogunate guys? Wait, I've seen this guy before. That's it! He's Hejikata from the Shinsengumi! What? The Shinsengumi? You mean the guys who off Sakamoto? As they began to scramble for their guns, I noticed the mark with the Tosa domain on their uniforms. That was quick. Unfortunately, they weren't fast enough for Hijikata. His hair snapped white, and he shot toward the soldiers, Kanasada in hand. Ah! Gah! His strike was so fast and elegant that the eye barely even had time to realize it had happened before two men fell dead to the ground. Wrong day to fuck with me, boys. Oh. Well. A volley of gunfire erupted from the rest of the Imperial soldiers nearby. Gah! I heard the wet thunk of bullets hitting Hijikata. He stumbled, but almost immediately his wounds began to close. That's how getting shot feels, huh? Not as bad as I thought. This is nothing! This doesn't even come close to what Kondo's going through right now! Hijikata launched himself at the nearest of the riflemen, his sword already in motion and his face twisted by grief and anger. Even without the fury powers, Hijikata and Shimada could have made short work of the small troop of men. But rage and frustration boiled inside him ever since we'd left Kondo, erupting in a torrent of violence. No! Stop! You can't use your powers! He had to understand what he was doing! Shut up! Stay out of this, goddammit! He knew what he was doing, but he was past caring. Welp. Hijikata leapt from tree to tree, damn. His sword flashing like lightning. Every time it moved, a life ended. Rage, anguish, and an unrestrained thirst for blood radiated out from him like heat from a fire. I could feel it even from where I stood. Blood soaked his face, chest, and hands. Still, he cut and cut, never satisfied. I saw Shimada and Soma sweating as they stood silently, watching Hijikata fight as a fury. They were mesmerized. I couldn't blame them. Okay, so Soma is here. Hijikata looked as if he'd forgotten how to do anything but kill. Every move he made drew blood, and every swing of his sword spilled a man out onto the dirt. He looked like a monster. At last, the only person still alive was Hichikata himself. Silence fell over the forest again. He turned to face us, every inch of skin slick with blood. Yeesh. Shimada. Soma. Go see if there's any more of them. Y yes sir Right this instant! They disappeared into the forest, desperate to distance themselves from the carnage. You. Go with him. His voice was cold and rough, like stones grinding against one another. Normally, I would have immediately done as he asked and headed off into the forest after Shimada. But this time... What the hell? I gave you an order. His words cut like a knife, but I didn't move. I'm sorry. But I can't do that. I am your commanding officer. I am giving you an order! 
He sounded angry, as he often did, but behind that anger was a deep, miserable sadness. If he didn't stay angry, I felt he would probably cry. I promise I won't get in your way, but please, just let me stay here with you. I knew there was nothing I could do for him, but neither could I bear to leave him alone. I refused to leave. He turned his back to me. To everything. His face was hidden from me. Aww. This boy. I have no idea what kind of expression he wore on his face. But suddenly his tall back and broad shoulders seemed small, tired, and very, very lonely. What could I say to him? How could I make him feel better? I searched my soul for something, anything, but I came up empty. After an interminable, miserable silence, he finally spoke. What the hell did I do? All of this for? How could this be the card fate had dealt two men so honest and determined? It just didn't seem fair. Was it just so I could give Kondo to those bastards? I busted my ass to give my friend to the enemy. I was going to make him important. Help carry him all the way to the top. Kansei Tekun and Kiyomasa wouldn't have anything on him. I wanted to see him fight in the kind of battles they wrote about. Like a true warrior. I wanted to see just how far the owner of a dojo from the sticks and a farmer's son could go. His voice had begun to shake. I wasn't even sure he still knew I was there. If he did, it seemed he no longer cared. I thought we were shooting for the same dream. Long as it was for him, I felt like I could do anything. So what the hell am I doing here, alive, while he's... He's God knows where! After all that self-righteous preaching, what did I do? I turned around and left him to the wolves! Hell, I'm just like the Shogun! Soon as things get dangerous, I turn tail and left better men to deal with my mess. God damn it! Why am I alive? It tore me apart to hear him talk like that. I couldn't bear to just stand and listen. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and pressed my face against his back. You are a brave woman. Aw. He said nothing. Kondo said... I mean, after you'd left, I told him that you'd figure it out. And he said that I was asking too much of you. No, I told myself you can't cry. The pain that Hichikata is feeling was far deeper than you could ever imagine, but to no avail. So the tears began to fall and I struggled ahead. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to know that your grief is shared, girl, so you cry. I know how much you care about Kondo, but he did what he did because he feels the same about you. Don't you see? It's not your fault. You can't blame yourself. Kondo didn't want you to die. That's why you're still alive. He ordered you to leave. You didn't have a choice. Just... Please, don't blame yourself. Hijikata listened, saying nothing. Or perhaps he didn't even hear me. Why did words feel so powerless when I needed them most? What good were they if I couldn't comfort someone I cared for when they were at their lowest? After several long minutes, I felt Hijikata relax. He did this to save me. But what the hell am I supposed to do without Isumi Kondo of the Shinsengumi? The dream of making him into an important person is what brought me here in the first place. Now that such a dream has left me, I don't have anything left. I'm nothing. <laughs> he gave a short bark of laughter, but there was no humor in it. Seriously, Kondo. Stop giving me all the shitty jobs. He choked back a sob and fell silent. <laughs>